Alright, so in this problem, I have x minus 4 to the power of 4 is equal to x to the power of 4. So to start, I'm going to rewrite this as x minus 4 squared to the power of 2 is equal to x squared to the power of 2. And now, I'm going to subtract both sides by x squared to the power of 2. So then these two cancel out. And now I have x minus 4 squared to the power of 2 minus x squared to the power of 2 is equal to 0. Now if I have something in the form a squared minus b squared, this is equal to a plus b times a minus b. So in this case, this is equal to x minus 4 squared plus x squared times x minus 4 squared minus x squared is equal to 0. Now, if I expand this, I get x squared minus 8x plus 16 plus x squared times x squared minus 8x plus 16 minus x squared is equal to 0. So this gives me 2x squared minus 8x plus 16 times, these two cancel out, negative 8x plus 16 is equal to 0. So now we have two equations. We have 2x squared minus 8x plus 16 is equal to 0, and we have negative 8x plus 16 is equal to 0. So for negative 8x plus 16 equals 0, I'm going to add 8x on both sides. These two cancel out, so I get 8x equals 16. And now if I divide both sides by 8, I get x is equal to 2. Now for 2x squared minus 8x plus 16, I can factor out 2. So I get x squared minus 4x plus 8 is equal to 0. And now this is the same thing as negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. So in this case, a is 1, b is negative 4, and c is 8. So I get, I get x equals negative of negative 4 plus or minus the square root of b squared, so negative 4 squared minus 4 times a, which is 1, times c, which is 8, all over 2a, so 2 times 1. Now this is equal to 4 plus or minus the square root of negative 4 squared, which is 16, minus 32, over 2, which is equal to 4 plus or minus the square root of negative 16 over 2, which is equal to 4 plus or minus 4i over 2, which is equal to 2 plus or minus 2i. All right, so in this problem, I have x to the power of x to the power of 3 is equal to 729. So for my solution, I obviously want to find the value of x. So I'm going to start by taking the power of 3 on both sides. So now I have x to the power of x to the power of 3 to the power of 3 is equal to 729 to the power of 3. Now, if I have something in the form a to the power of m to the power of n, this is equal to a to the power of m times n. And for a to the power of m times n, this is the same thing as a to the power of n times m. I can switch these two places. Meaning, if a to the power of m times n is equal to a to the power of m to the power of n, then a to the power of n times m, this is equal to a to the power of n to the power of m. So this means that a to the power of m to the power of n is equal to a to the power of n to the power of m. So right here, we have x to the power of x to the power of 3 to the power of 3, and we can think of x to the power of 3 as m and 3 as n. So this is the same thing as x to the power of 3 to the power of x to the power of 3. And this is equal to 729 to the power of 3. Now, 729 is the same thing as 9 to the power of 3. So now I have x to the power of 3 to the power of x to the power of 3 is equal to 9 to the power of 3 
to the power of 3. And remember again, if I have something in the form a to the power of m to the power of n, this is equal to a to the power of m times n. So 9 to the power of 3 to the power of 3, that's going to equal 9 to the power of 3 times 3, which is equal to 9 to the power of 9. So now I have x to the power of 3 to the power of x to the power of 3 is equal to 9 to the power of 9. And now if I have something in the form a to the power of a is equal to b to the power of b, this means that a is equal to b. So in this case, x to the power of 3 is equal to 9. Now to solve this, all I have to do is take the cube root on both sides. So now I have the cube root of x to the power of 3 is equal to the cube root of 9. And the cube root of x to the power of 3 is equal to x, so I have x is equal to the cube root of 9. Alright, so in this problem, I have x to the power of x to the power of 77 is equal to 77. So I obviously want to find the value of x for this problem. So for my solution, I'm going to first start by taking the power of 77 on both sides. So now I have x to the power of x to the power of 77 to the power of 77 is equal to 77 to the power of 77. Now, if I have something in the form a to the power of m to the power of n, this is the same thing as a to the power of m times n, right? And a to the power of m times n, this is the same thing as a to the power of n times m. They're both the same thing, it doesn't matter the order. So now, if a to the power of m times n is equal to a to the power of m to the power of n, then this means that a to the power of n times m is equal to a to the power of n to the power of m. And because all of these equal each other, this means that a to the power of m to the power of n is equal to a to the power of n to the power of m. So over here, we have x to the power of x to the power of 77 to the power of 77. And we can think of x to the power of 77 as m and 77 as n. So now, remember, this is the same thing as I can switch these two places. So now I have x to the power of 77 to the power of x to the power of 77 is equal to 77 to the power of 77. Now I'm going to let x to the power of 77 equal to the variable y. So now if I substitute in y for x to the power of 77, I get y to the power of y is equal to 77 to the power of 77. Now, if I have something in the form a to the power of a is equal to b to the power of b, this means that a is equal to b. So in this case, y to the power of y equals 77 to the power of 77. This means that y equals 77. And remember how we let x to the power of 77 equal y. So now I have x to the power of 77 is equal to 77. So to solve this, I'm going to take the power of 1 over 77 on both sides. So I have x to the power of 77 to the power of 1 over 77 is equal to 77 to the power of 1 over 77. So I get x is equal to the 77th root of 77. Alright, so in this problem, I have 4 to the power of x is equal to 8. So obviously here, I want to find the value of x. So for my solution, first start by rewriting my problem. So I have 4 to the power of x is equal to 8. Now 4 here. This is the same thing as 2 squared. So I'm going to rewrite this as 2 squared to the power of x. I, all I did was replace 4 with 2 squared. And now 8 
This is the same thing as 2 to the power of 3. So I'm going to replace 8 with 2 to the power of 3. So I have 2 squared to the power of x is equal to 2 to the power of 3. And if I have something in the form a to the power of m to the power of n, this is equal to a to the power of m times n. So 2 to the power of 2 to the power of x, that's going to equal 2 to the power of 2 times x, which is simply 2 to the power of 2x. And now this is equal to 2 to the power of 3. And now, if I have something in the form a to the power of m, is equal to a to the power of n, this means that m is equal to n. Meaning in this case, 2x is equal to m and 3 is n. So I have 2x is equal to 3. And this is a simple equation. All I have to do is divide both sides by 2. So then these two cancel out and I get x is equal to 3 over 2. All right, so in this problem, I have x to the power of x plus 1 is equal to x. So to solve this, I'm going to start by subtracting x on both sides. So then these two cancel out, and I'm left with x to the power of x plus 1 minus x is equal to 0. Now, if I have something in the form a to the power of m plus n, this is equal to a to the power of m times a to the power of n. So x to the power of x plus 1, this is going to be equal to x to the power of x times x to the power of 1. Now I have this minus x is equal to 0. Now if I factor out x, I get x times x to the power of x minus 1 is equal to 0. So now this gives me two equations. I have x is equal to 0, and I have x to the power of x minus 1 is equal to 0. So x equals 0. This is already a solution. Now for x to the power of x minus 1 equals 0, I'm going to add 1 on both sides. So then these two cancel out, and I get x to the power of x is equal to 1. Now, because x has to be the same number, we obviously know that, well, what number to the power of self is equal to 1? That's going to be 1, right? Because 1 to the power of 1 is equal to self. So x is equal to 1. And there's no, actually, there's no other number that, when you take the power of itself, is going to equal 1. S meaning, x equals 1 is the only solution to this equation. So now, to check, the original equation was x to the power of x plus 1 is equal to x. So, x to the power of x plus 1 is equal to x. And our first solution was 0. So if I plug in 0, I get 0 to the power of 0 plus 1 is equal to 0. Now 0 plus 1 is 1, so I have 0 power to the power of 1 equals 0. And 0 to the power of any number is itself, so I get 0 equals 0. Now to check for 1, I get 1 to the power of 1 plus 1 is equal to 1. 1 plus 1 is 2, so I get 1 to the power of 2 is equal to 1. And 1 to the power of any number itself, so 1 equals 1. All right, so in this problem, I have x to the power of x is equal to 100. So I'm going to first start by taking the natural log, or ln, on both sides. So I have ln x to the power of x is equal to ln 100. Now, if I have something in the form ln a to the power of b, I can move this x1 and b to the front. So this can equal b times ln a. So for ln x to the power of x, I can move x to the front, and I'm going to get x times ln x is equal to ln 100. 
Now ln 100, that's the same thing as ln of 10 squared. So I get x times ln x is equal to ln 10 squared. And if I have something in the form ln a to the power of b, again, I can move to the front. So I get x times ln x is equal to 2 times ln 10. Now, there's something called the W Lambert function. And if I take the W Lambert function of something in the form e to the power of, sorry, a times e to the power of a, this is going to equal a. So this is basically what the W Lambert function is. So if there's something in the form a to the power, a times e to the power of a, that's going to equal a. So what I'm going to do over here is I'm going to rewrite x here as e to the power of ln of x because e, the e and ln cancel out and this results in simply x. So I'm just going to rewrite x as e to the power of ln of x and I have this times ln x is equal to 2 times ln 10. And now this is in the form a times e to the power of a. So now if I take the w Lambert function on both sides, This results in ln x equaling w of 2 times ln 10. And now if I take e to the power of both sides, I get e to the power of ln x is equal to e to the power of w of 2 ln 10. And e to the power of ln x, that's going to equal x. So I get x is equal to e to the power of w of 2 times ln 10. And this is equal to 3.597285, which rounds up to 3.597. So this is my answer to this problem.